What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you some lighting tips and tricks in Enscape 2.3 for SketchUp. Let's get started. First, I'm going to change the time of day to night time so we can see the full effects of the lights. To start creating lights for Enscape, first click this button here to launch Enscape objects. This toolbar contains several types of objects including proxy, which I cover in a previous video, but more importantly, it contains the different types of lights that you can use to illuminate your model. You can click on one of these light sources to start creating it. I'll start with the simplest type of light, the sphere light. I can create a sphere light by clicking on this icon here, and now I can choose where I want to place it. Enscape has a two-click system that helps you place your lights very easily. First, you can click on a point of reference. From there, you can move to another location and click again to finalize it. Pretty easy, huh? After I have created it, I can set the strength of the light using the luminous intensity slider here. The reason why you can't see much of a difference here is because auto exposure is turned on. So I'm gonna go to the general tab in the settings window and turn that off. Now when you adjust the light, you will see the real effect of the intensity. You can also adjust the exposure brightness here to brighten up your scene as well. If you have a lot of the same lights in your model, then you can make duplicates of that light by copying and pasting it, or using the move tool and tap control to activate copy mode. When you create these copies, you can adjust the strength of one of the lights and the others will be adjusted as well. A better way is to place the lights inside components like this. That way, when you add it to one instance, it will also be added to all of the other instances. Similar to the previous method, any changes you make to this light will also affect the others. The sphere light also have the option of adjusting the light source radius. This will control the size of the light source in meters. However, this is only visible in reflections such as a mirror. The look of the lights in reflections also depends on the roughness of that material. The higher the roughness, the bigger the area becomes, which makes it more blurry and less visible. That's why for this scene, it doesn't make much of a difference, so I'm gonna leave the radius at zero. The next light on the list is spotlight. Unlike the sphere light, the spotlight can be placed with four clicks, but it still follows the same two-click system. The first two clicks will determine the origin of the light, and the other two clicks is to determine the light's direction. After it's created, you can click this point on the arc to adjust the beam angle, which you can also change using this slider here. And here you can also change the strength of the light. When using spotlights, you also have an option to use an IES file which has a lighting profile that is more realistic than the typical spotlight. Note that sometimes the IES light is not symmetrical rotationally. If that's the case, then you can rotate the light by clicking on this handle here, and move the mouse to the left or right to rotate it. Rectangular lights and disc lights are categorized as area lights. Here I want to place a rectangular light in the center of this opening to simulate the light coming from the other room. First, I'm going to click on the midpoint of this opening now I can use it as a reference to move to the other point. Between the first and second click, you can use the arrows on your keyboard to lock to a certain axis. The up arrow will lock to the blue axis, the left arrow will lock to the green axis, and the right arrow will lock to the red axis. I'm going to press up and lock to the blue axis. Then go down here and across to the other midpoint. Then finally click here to create the light right in the center of the opening. From there, I can use the last two clicks to choose the direction of the light. Now I can use these points to adjust the width and length of the light. But you can see that this is not scaling from the center. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo it. And adjust the size of the light using these sliders instead. This way, the light will be scaled from the center. Note that if you exit out of edit mode, you can always go back by double clicking the light to adjust the origin and direction of it. Finally, I'm going to adjust the strength here. The last light on the list is linear light. I'm going to use the linear light to place it outside above this opening. So first I'm going to click the midpoint of this window and move up a bit, then place a the light there. Now I can adjust the length of the light using the slider here, and adjust the strength of it here. If you look closely, half of the light is inside the wall. This might cause some issues in the rendering, so I'm going to move it out a bit like so. There we go, that's better. You can also rotate the linear lights by first clicking on these dots, and then drag the mouse left and right to rotate it. However, this does not provide accurate rotation to a specific degree, 
For a more accurate rotation, you can rotate lights using SketchUp Native tools. Also notice that the placement of your linear lights will affect where the light shines. The lights along the length are soft, while the lights on each end of the fixture are somewhat more focused. Now let's get back to our model. If you want to add color to your light, first create a color material, then go to that light and paint it like so. Now any adjustment that you make to that material will be reflected in the real-time render. Pretty cool, huh? Finally, you can use emissive materials to create a lit light bulb effect. You can do that by turning on self-illumination in the material editor or by adding the keyword emissive in the material's name. Now I can adjust the intensity of it here and I can also add a color of the light here. And those are all the tips for lighting in Enscape 2.3 for SketchUp. Leave a like if you found the video helpful, comment below what you want to see next, stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.